20 years. Seriously. Really? Before that, it was oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, so is it like a non-denominational? So I do have a story to tell. It's part of the Jewish history of Santa Fe. My grandparents uh, came to Albuquerque in 1905 to work with my grandfather's uh, relatives, the Rosenwald brothers. And then they came to Santa Fe and opened up a department store, which is quite remarkable when you think of how it must have been then. The Stobbs and the Ophelds set up stores in Santa Fe, in Taos, and in Las Vegas, New Mexico. The people we're talking about, these pioneer Jews, were almost entirely, there were a few exceptions, German Jews. We're going to be talking about the Jewish Kulturbund, in, mainly in Berlin, between 1933 and its demise in 1939. On the 1st of April of 1933, there was a methodical boycott of Jewish goods, doctors, and lawyers, and merchants. Six days later, in April, on April 7th of 1933, all non-Aryans were eliminated from civil service. That included musicians playing in symphony orchestras. The Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, as the first mass revolt in a major city in Nazi-occupied Europe, became a symbol of Jewish resistance to Nazi oppression, inspiring similar revolts in Bialystok and in Minsk, as well as uprisings in Treblinka and Sobibor later in 1943. The Jewish fighters in Warsaw, under-equipped and overmatched, with few weapons and almost no military training, managed to hold off the German forces for as long as the entire Polish army had in the invasion of Poland at the beginning of the war. But it was not enough. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Shula Reines. I'm so happy to be here. So Children of the Sun invites you to join in the discussion about collective child rearing and the concept of kibbutz. When the film hit the Israeli screens in 2007, so it's about a decade old, it caused a lot of controversy. Why is that? Well, first of all, everything causes controversy in Israel. <laughs> but everybody has an opinion about the kibbutz. Is it thriving? Is it dying? Is it limping? All of my energies really are going into uh, the conference on the early origins of male violence. And along with that, there'll be a publication, which is the Infant Mental Health Journal, a special issue of the Infant Mental Health Journal that will come out in January uh, 2019. The conference will follow that five months later in May 2019. And the vehicle for organizing all of this is the Santa Fe Boys Educational Foundation. Hi, this is Robert Ephraimson, and I'm a volunteer for the Jewish Federation of New Mexico. Um, I'd like, first of all, to offer heartfelt thanks to Temple Beth Shalom, your entire community, your board. Uh, Rabbi Amswich uh, is just a, a fantastic pillar of the community, and we're lucky to have him. Uh, uh, and, and those of you who have supported us um, as a federation, have supported the Jewish Care Program, and believe in the services that we now are offering um, to Santa Fe and northern New Mexico. So the Jewish Care Program is this wonderful opportunity for the Santa Fe community. And the Jewish Care Program offers a variety of social services, and a main priority is helping our Jewish elders. Please send people our way. Don't worry about whether it's the appropriate thing or not. Just give us a call and let us see if we can help other people. For me, it's very important that Federation isn't just seen as being in Albuquerque. For me, it's very important that people understand that we aren't just working in silos, in one temple and another temple, but that we all work together. And working together doesn't just mean within one town, but actually means across Albuquerque, Santa Fe, and beyond as well. Oh, so that's, you know, in, in Baghdad, uh, often this was donated uh, by, in memory of women. So that's very nice that the one that you have also is uh, for this woman, Sarah. Mm -hmm. That she passed away. 
And it's all by Jewish craftsmen in Baghdad, we know very well. I mean, also the silver, because the, the silver market in Baghdad in this period was mostly Jewish, mm -hmm. Jewish silversmiths. Right. And the dedication here, and this is again magic, it's against the evil eye, this oh. red. Um, the the, the, well, coral, it's glass, the, I yes. think, but it's meant to it's be coral. Good, yeah. It's also to protect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That and I didn't the realize. Rimonim are typical Baghdad Rimonim as well. Mm -hmm. They are very small and you know how to tell the difference between European to Islamic uh, Rimonim. Because there are no bells in the lands of Islam. In Europe they have actual bells. How do we define what is Jewish through words? How do we define how we build our Jewish identity in this space of cultures of contact? in this uh, relationship we, of, of diaspora, of being surrounded, of having multiple, as we say in French, les, les multiples appartenances. We belong to many, many different places, many different people. We, we are multiple as Jews and as Sephardi Jews, even more so because Sephardi Jews have multiple spectrum of languages constantly and of literatures and of texts and of songs. So how does this negotiation define what it is to be a Jew, what it is to be a Sephardi Jew, what it means to be a Moroccan Jew? What it... I went to Oklahoma City to see my father. This was after he'd woken up from his coma but was still in the hospital. Come here, my father said when I entered the room. Extending his arm, he reached for my hand so that we can talk Panim el Panim. Panim el Panim. Now, this was weird in a thousand different ways. To begin with, my father wasn't an overtly religious man. His life centered on business, on golf, on his membership in the Masonic Temple. He had not, to my knowledge, ever delved into the Torah, nor had he lived in a community whose members delved into the Torah. Even his rabbi, I'm certain, had probably never delved too deeply into the Torah, <laughs> nor, I'm sure of this, had my father ever spoken a word of conversational Hebrew in his life. And so my question, what makes Spinoza so attractive? Uh, and if you are attracted by Spinoza, you're in good company. Uh, when Einstein was asked whether he believed in God, he said, yes, I believe in the God of Spinoza. I think part of the attraction is that he looks like a figure outside of time. He was the first person to declare that democracy is the best form of government and the most natural. He paved the way for the invention of the social sciences. Mind and body are identical instead of thinking of mind as some disembodied substance. And this apparently is, is very hot in psychology today. The, identity of mind and body. He's a pioneer in the new idea of privacy. People should be free to live and believe as they like. So he's a very early, very early advocate of freedom of religion, of freedom of thought and expression, even in poli and freedom of politics from religious interference. So what is the Arma Institute? We are a uh, an academic research institute located, as I mentioned, on Kibbutz Keturah, which is in the very south of Israel, on the border with Jordan. We bring Jews and Arabs together, Israelis, Palestinians, Jordanians, international students, in order to teach that nature knows no borders. And what we tell them is you really can't learn how to live in peace with nature until you've learned how to live in peace with your neighbor. Uh, the scarcest resource in the Middle East is not water. It's trust, and that's what we do with the Arba Institute. We build trust. Thank you. I've been learning to really realize that until maybe 150 or 80 really years, really good people thought about, you know, the book of Genesis the way we think about the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. That's just it.